Good morning, everybody. This is Eric Ladd with Outlaw Realty. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the Big Sky Real Estate Market Update. Uh, just to jump into this um, and make good use of everyone's time, uh, the goals of today is basically to give a platform and share some data and thoughts about where the Big Sky Real Estate Market is today. And we'll be dissecting this from a high level down. We'll be talking about some national data. We'll bring that down to the local Big Sky level. And then being able to overlay that with thoughts on, on how to move forward into this next year's worth of uh, opportunities for buyers and sellers. A couple things about today. First off, if you've got um, any questions, there's a Q&A button at the bottom. You're welcome to submit questions. And we'll do our best at the answer at the end to be able to address those. Second is this is being recorded. And for those that are not able to join us live, we will be sharing this with you all and those that have expressed interest. I'll open with a story as any good, uh, any good webinar or tale begins with how this all began and especially how it began for me. So I'm Eric Ladd with LR Realty and I was lucky enough to move to Big Sky 25 years ago. A very good dear friend of mine and mentor in life, Warren Miller, and I were working together in Vail and I got a phone call from Warren one day. I'll never forget us sitting on a chairlift in Vail. And he said, Eric, you need to get to Montana tomorrow. You're about to witness some history here in Southwest Montana. So when Warren says jump, I used to say how high. And so I got in the plane at that time. There were only two flights coming into Bozeman, one from Salt Lake and one from Billings flew in. Warren picked me up in Bozeman and we drove up to Big Sky that night and drove up an old dirt road, an old logging road up to what is now Yellowstone Club. I'll never forget the next day I woke up and saw the beautiful Lone Mountain and it snowed a lot that night and it was just absolutely loaded with snow and it was a beautiful bluebird day. And I was lucky enough to get a personal tour of what was to become the future Yellowstone Club from Warren and the previous owner, Tim Blixeth. And we took an incredible morning of skiing around and at that time, Tim expressing his vision of building what has now become Yellowstone Club. But the important part of this story was this. Warren has been around the world, had been around the world, seen every major ski area and witnessed most of the development of especially all the, the ski areas in the Rocky Mountains. And Warren saw something really special in Big Sky in Southwest Montana. And he said, Eric, this is going to be a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a ski town get built from ground up. And Mo Boy was Warren Wright, looking back 25 years now. Some of the things that Warren really saw that was unique about Big Sky in Southwest Montana compared to a lot of other places in the country and in the world were things like amazing opportunity. We had a lot of vacant land here that had an opportunity to get first generation development on it. Second is being that proximity to Yellowstone Park and then beautiful features that mother nature's provided like the Gallatin River, all these incredible peaks great town like Bozeman down the road with an amazing university. And then ultimately just the incredible backcountry opportunities here with all of our great skiing, hiking, recreating in the area. Warren's like, this is best of class. So I packed up, moved here, and we started our, our journey as a, as a group and as a family here over the last 25 years. So I owe a lot to Warren for, for getting me up and getting me out of Colorado to this beautiful place and so some of the, the the stories and data that we'll share today are a look back over the last 25 years in what has happened in this real estate market and how it applies to today, especially for people that are either buyers or sellers. So before we jump into it, I'll, I'll share one other thing. Big Sky, since I've been here in 25 years, has been through some incredible runs, a lot of ups, a couple downs, but primarily this has been an upward trajectory for this market based off of a lot of the great fundamentals of what I talked about and amazing opportunity to come here and own real estate and be part of this community. But if I were to look back, especially over the last couple of years, the way I, I describe the real estate market to people is we have been through in a massive growth spurt, especially during COVID, probably abnormally fast growth spurt. And so we've kind of outgrown our clothes, I like to tell people. So we're having a little bit of a breath and pause right now as we catch up and we'll do a deeper dive into what this means and how it applies to you as buyers or sellers. So let's jump into the agenda today. So the agenda is going to start with a quick introduction of who's joining us today. So we've got Mike Magrins from LR Real Estate Partners who's going to be covering some of the um, national market overview data. 
Michael Pitcairn from Outlaw Realty will be diving into the market data and statistics of what's happening here in Big Sky. I'll be jumping back and talking about how to be a buyer and how to be a seller in this market. We'll close with a Q&A and some closing remarks. The goal is to keep this about an hour. So a little brief history of the market of Big Sky and what we're seeing and the impact in the area. So what was once a little small Chet Huntley vision and sleepy ski town has become quite the contrary. One in three jobs across Gallatin and Madison County are affected by what's going on in Big Sky today. Big Sky's real estate market generates $58 million in property taxes. That is substantial when you look at the overall landscape of what's going on in the Montana area. And we lead the state in lodging that tax collection equated to about 12.2% in 2023. Another really interesting stat about how this impacts the overall landscape of Montana is the real estate market in Big Sky equates to somewhere between 5 to 7% of the overall GDP of the state of Montana. Now let that sink in for a minute. That is massive when you think about that. Montana's GDP, 5 to 7% of it's from the real estate market in Montana. So this is a very substantial conversation that we're having today and, and a very big deal for the state of Montana. So let's start at about 30,000 feet and start to bring it down. I'd like to introduce Mike Magrins. He's going to speak to us about the national market and some insights on how that applies to our market as we move forward. Mike? Yeah, thank you, Eric. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're going to talk <clears throat> about some national market insights and trends that are really impacting um, the market here in Big Sky as well. So moving on to the first slide here. Great. So the headline, as usual, is always about interest rates and how are interest rates impacting the home, uh, national home market and residential market. And then we really haven't seen much change. We're still hovering around 7% for the average interest rate on the 30-year fixed mortgage, um, a little bit less for the 15-year. And, and what's driving that? Why are we stuck? <clears throat> and it's really simply about uh, the inflation numbers. You know, the Fed... Federal Reserve Bank is targeting around a 2% interest rate, and we just can't seem to get below that 3% yet. And until we do, um, we're probably going to see interest rates still hovering around 65 to 7%. And that's the inflection point. So what we've noticed over the last 12 to 24 months, um, and historically, is any time that we're able to get below 6.5% interest rates, it gets the buyers off the sidelines and into the market. And that could happen. You know, we're still pretty optimistic that there'll be at least one, perhaps two interest rate cuts uh, by year's end. And if that does happen, um, there's a high likelihood that we'll see some more demand in the market. We'll talk a little bit about how that might affect pricing shortly. So what is happening with pricing? Um, so in the last year, we saw about a five and a half, uh, 5.3 percent increase in prices. And what we're forecasting um, or CoreLogic is forecasting over the next year is a, it actually a slowdown finally in price increases. And why is that happening? Um, it's really about affordability. Um, you know, when I think we've, we've really reached at a national market level and we're seeing this in Big Sky and Bozeman as well, where the, the home buyer is really just tapped out on affordability. And therefore we're seeing uh, between the interest rate increases, just the price of homes increases, we're finally going to start seeing a slowdown in year-over-year -year price increases. And <clears throat> while we might feel like Montana has experienced some extraordinary price increases, yes, we have, uh, but this is a national trend. You know, particularly in the in the in the last year in the Northeast, you're seeing seven percent, almost double-digit increases in prices. And Montana is about at the national average, which is in that three to five percent um, increase in prices. But you know, as buyers, um, you know, really think about en entering back into the market, and uh, what I talked about once that interest rate comes comes back to around six and a half percent, there is some thought in the market that that would increase demand and could also increase prices. Um, so just because interest rates are coming down and makes homes more affordable, 
uh, we actually could see uh, a, a, a further increase in prices just because of demand. Next slide. So the good news, uh, and this map represents building permits by state. The good news is that new homes and new inventory is on the way. And so in Montana, we saw new build permits were up almost 80% year over year. And what happens when you introduce new supply into the market? Theoretically, you should have a decrease or stabilization in pricing. And we fully expect to see that. But the most interesting fact is that homes are really getting smaller. You know, so the average home nationally is around 20, has been around 2,400 square feet. And we're seeing a dip down to about 2,200 square feet um, because it just makes it more affordable. Um, houses are becoming more efficient, better designed, but really what's driving that is builders need to decrease costs and they're just decreasing the size of the home. And then finally, we took a look at the luxury market. <clears throat> so similar markets to Big Sky being Vail, Telluride, Palm Springs, and what's happening in those markets. So this data of single family homes uh, to and to get into this pool, you have to be generally around uh, generally a market with over a million dollars at your median list price. And <clears throat> there's two things that stand out for me at the luxury market that I think are uh, running parallel to what we're seeing here in Big Sky is that the total inventory is way up. So May 23, we had a total inventory of luxury homes and luxury markets at around 52,000. And that inventory is almost up at 70,000 right now. And when you have that much inventory added to the market, that much new supply, you'll see the listings are also up. You're just going to see a stall out in pricing. And that's exactly what happened in the luxury market in the last year. So you'll see the median sales price per square foot decreased from 408 to 400. And the median sale price uh, really just stalled out at $1.3 million. So um, I think this trend will continue. I think we'll continue to see a bit of a stall out at the luxury market as people um, are waiting for interest rates to come down uh, and the affordability has just gone up so high. That's it on the national market overview. Hand it back to you, Eric. Thank you, Mike. Um, you know, that last that last slide, try to remember some of that data as we move forward into this and, and we get into the Q&A. That's a, there's some really important data that, uh, you know, we are not alone in this in what's going on in Jackson Hole and Aspen and Telluride and such. Um, these are very similar trends in a lot of markets. And we are on what we think is just the front end of what we are going to refer to as kind of just a general stall in the market or flattening of the market in the in the next couple of quarters. But this data is is something that really supports that thesis and helps us um, kind of dive into that. But let's first jump into what is happening today in the big sky market. Uh, we've got Michael Pitcairn with Outlaw Realty. He's going to help us dissect what the data looks like in our market here at home. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Like Eric mentioned, I'm going to cover the recent Big Sky winter sales data. I'm going to break this down into a few key segments. The overall residential market, Big Sky excluding the clubs. Then I'm going to jump into Moonlight Basin and Spanish Peaks. And finally, I'll finish up by briefly touching base on land and commercial. I want to preface this talk by mentioning that Big Sky data can be influenced heavily by a few factors since there are so few relative sales in any given segment. If you have any questions on a specific area, please schedule a call to discuss that individual market so we can give you the accurate information on that particular area. Uh, to help give some context to this data, we're going to be looking back as far as winter 2022. Um, looking at the overall big sky market in winter 2022, we had 170 sales followed by a 50% decrease to 85 sales for winter 2023, then a rise of 32% in winter of 2024 to conclude with 112 residential sales. Something important to note is the percentage um, of new construction sales, how that impacts the overall sales. So for example, back in 2022, of that 170 sales, 50 of them were new construction. 
2023 saw 32 new construction sales of the total 85 sales. And then again, in 2024, of that 112, 31 were new construction. It's important to note because that really represents former market activity. A lot of that new construction product either went under contract at least six months or a year in advance. So it's really um, telling of previous market activity. Um, you're going to see a common theme throughout this data. We're going to see a height in 2022, followed by a 40 to 60 percent dip in 2023, and then a 30 to 50 percent rise in sales for 2024. Now, let's focus on the residential sales outside the club. In winter 2022, we had 144 sales versus 58 in 23, followed by 72 sales in winter of 2024. The median sold price, respectively, was $1.25 million, and then $1.77 million. And then finally, in 2024, the median sold price was $1.35 million. The median sold price per square foot was $744 in 2022, followed by $728 a foot in 2023, and then finally $742 a square foot in 2024. Now let's move on and talk about Moonlight Basin and Spanish Peaks. This does not include data on the Yellowstone Club. We're just going to focus on Moonlight and Spanish Peaks. Um, we'll touch on land briefly. We had 17 sales in winter of 2022, followed by only six in 23. And then we had 10 sales in the winter of 2024. Moving on to the residential side, we had 26 sales in winter of 2022, followed by 27 in 2023, and finally 40 total residential sales in winter of 2024. An important data point, I touched on this earlier, um, were the amount of new construction sales incorporated into that total sales number. So of the 40 sales that we had last winter, 25 of those were new construction homes versus in 2023, we had 21 of 27 sales uh, that were new construction. So what that's telling us is the resale market is picking up, but that data is also still being driven by new construction sales. Interestingly enough, those new construction properties, most of those went under contract in 21 and 22, believe it or not. And with no none of those properties going under contract in 23, and then only one of those going under contract in 2024. So the 40 sales sounds like a big increase from the 27 in winter 2023, but the current Spanish peaks and moonlight market data has been influenced greatly from market activity in 2022. Of those 40 sales, it was split pretty, split pretty equally between moonlight and Spanish peaks. But Moonlight had 11 resale homes sell versus only three in Spanish Peaks. For the resale homes, the median price per square foot was roughly $1,630 a square foot, whereas new construction, um, the median was $1,700 a square foot. Resales garnered about 93% of the list price, where the new construction has been averaging about 100% unless upgrades were made to the home during construction. Let's touch on land briefly. Um, in winter of 2022, there were 46 sales, followed by 13 in the winter of 23, followed by 24 this past winter. In certain areas, land pricing has been more favorable than previous winters, so buyers have been looking to lock in good value on land and taking their time to research and procure a builder, which has become easier as of recent. Commercial sales. In winter 2022, we had six sales, followed by nine in winter of 2023, ending with two in winter 2024. Commercial sales are impacted by a number of factors, including at times very limited supply and also the fluctuating demand. Like I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, Big Sky data is challenged. I'm sorry, Big Sky data is challenging to interpret, giving the low data sets and variety of property types inside that data. So please reach out about your particular property or area you're interested in buying 
and we're happy to provide a specific data analysis. I hope you found the data informative and not too overwhelming. Thank you for your time today. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Eric. Thank you, Michael. Um, you know, a couple of things that stand out to me in that data is this. It's first off, as Michael said, it's is this data can get heavily influenced by just one or two sales. So the data, you got to take a little bit with a grain of salt. Um, you got to stay up at that 30,000 feet and remember, you know, Big Sky is a really unique place, really high quality real estate, a lot of great choices. When you go compare this to other markets, especially around the Rockies, you don't have nearly the, the you know, the array of choices um, that we have here. That being said, you know, we're trying to study this to try to get ahead of what is potentially a curve change in trajectory because we have had a very strong 10 year run of appreciation in this market and data suggests that this is flattening and that we are starting to see this shift to being in a moment here, I'll talk about it to a buyer's market. One of the other things that really stands out to me in that data is that the clubs heavily influence what's going on in this area. Spanish Peaks and Moonlight are wonderful clubs, great amenities, some very strong property values coming out of there. So when you start to see changes in that, it definitely has a trickle down effect in impacting this market quite a bit. And that a lot of this data that we're seeing this year is lag from stuff that went under contract years ago. So and a lot of that stuff that went under contract was during that COVID time. So you sometimes hear people call it a COVID bubble per se. We're in the belief that it's a COVID blip, not a bubble. A bubble is something that bursts. People that bought during the COVID time bought here because they loved it. Big Sky. They love the clubs. They love being next to Yellowstone, all these great things that we've talked about. That being said, COVID did create a very abnormal demand curve, and that created a very strong spike in property values that probably is not going to last. We're starting to see that settle out a little bit. Some of that pricing and demand that we saw during the COVID times has subsided. And I think that that we're having a little bit of a hangover effect from that and not a bubble, but a blip and that blip is starting to kind of flatten back out. So COVID, I think when we look back five, 10 years from now, we're going to think fine that it definitely had a very strong impact on our market um, and brought a lot of people here kind of almost abnormally fast. Um, an asterisk on this, Michael did cover this. This does not include Yellowstone Club data. It goes without saying that the Yellowstone Club has a massive impact on this real estate market, both pricing and demand and overall dollars coming into the market. Um, since that data is not publicly available, all I can say is that it is a massive data set and definitely has a very strong impact on the on the region and the state. So how to approach this market? So I think I'd like to dissect this into, into two sides. You know, we'll talk about buyers and sellers. So what we'll start with is, uh, is how to be a seller in this market. So it goes without saying that when you go to make a purchase or a sale in real estate, one of the largest investments you're going to make in your life, it's really important to have the right team. So make sure you get a quality brokerage that really understands not only what's going on in the, in the market, but also what your needs and goals are. And make sure that is upfront, discussed, and that you have a really good plan and strategy going into this. The days of just putting a property into MLS and hoping it sells is over. It is not going to achieve the result that you or the brokerage is looking for. So make sure that you have that pre-interview with the brokerage and that you articulate your goals very clearly on not only timing, but ideally price and end result that you would be happy with. In, in that step, make sure you do a lot of research before that listing is sent. Ask for data. Ask for data that pertains exactly to the type of property that you're looking to sell and make sure that you understand that and get those questions addressed long before you're signing a listing agreement and getting this property into market. So second thing that we found, as I stated, the days of just listing in MLS and selling are over. You need to have a brokerage that's going to come up with an aggressive marketing and sales strategy. You need to make sure that you've got very unique marketing created for your very unique property. Every property is different. No, none of these are the same. You need to make sure that the story about your property is adequately told and that there's an aggressive marketing strategy, not only locally, but regionally and nationally for your property. 
Before you list, you got to make sure your property is ready to market. If it's a piece of land, this is the time to get in and clean up dead trees, clean up downfall, open up view corridors, make sure that the property is properly marketed and ready to go. Some of the tricks with land include things like put up a view tower, get people up off the ground, let them see the beautiful views that could come from a first or second story of a home. Make sure, as I stated, that you get in and clean up that lot and make sure it's ready to go. Another trick, make sure the property corners are properly marked. It seems simple, but you would be amazed on how many times you go out to tour a piece of land and you can't find the corners of a property. Little things like a view tower and a property corner being marked are critical in the success of selling a piece of land. If you have a home, this is the time to get in and clean it up. It's time to do that spring cleaning throughout. You got to get in and make that home shine, get the windows clean, get rid of all the clutter. And this is also the time to get your personal belongings out of a home. So a lot of the personal photos and personal stuff that goes into the house during a market that's more competitive, it is statistically proven that you've, if people that go in and get this home staged properly have better results on the back end for selling. So make sure that you get the proper counsel and get your property properly staged. All right. Now, this is the big one. You have to be priced appropriately. This is not a market where you can top tick and try to go back and grab 2021 pricing. Unless you have a unicorn of a property, we have found that you have to be properly priced today to have a chance at selling. Properties that are properly priced and marketed correctly and staged correctly are getting great results. People have had, if you've owned a property for more than two years, you've had appreciation. But a lot of the numbers that we remember from three, four years ago likely do not exist for your property anymore. So get the good counsel and make sure that you are priced appropriately. The old adage about pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered, this definitely applies right now in this market. So once again, we are seeing properties that are priced proper, appropriately sell instantly. We had a great listing in Aspen Groves lately, recently that was priced appropriately. We had competing offers on the same day and got a great buyer in place. So the, the data is very strong in this segment. For sellers, listen to me now, you've got to be priced appropriately. And the last thing I would say for sellers is this, take every offer seriously. Even if you get what is deemed a low ball offer or an offer that you do not feel is acceptable, take every offer seriously. Make sure that you engage with that buyer. Understand why they came up with that number. Have a good conversation about that and see if you can keep that conversation going moving forward to see if you can find a place that you would be happy to land with. Anyone that's writing an offer right now should be deemed a unicorn. You got to take them very seriously and appreciate even lowball offers to make sure that you keep that conversation engaged throughout the entire process. And you'd be surprised on how many times an offer that first comes in is not acceptable to you. If you've got a good team with, with agents and brokers that are working together on both sides and understand sellers and buyers goals can work together and get a good result. All right. But if you had to remember one thing out of this entire slide as a seller, you have to be priced appropriately in today's market. This is not a time to throw a big number on it and hope you get some offers. What we're finding is properties that are overpriced on the market are not getting any offers in today's market. All right, on to, sell, on to buyers. Well, buyers, welcome back. You haven't had a buyer's market in over 10 years and it's here right now. That's an exciting time to be a buyer, especially in an amazing place like Big Sky, Montana, one of the finest ski resort towns in all of America, if not the world. And buyers, you're back in the driver's seat right now. And why can I say that? Well, first off, Mike Magrin touched on this a little bit. We're seeing an uptick in the number of listings, not only in the quantity, but the quality of listings. In 25 years of being here, I can say that this is probably some of the best set of listings that I've seen on the market in a long time. Got a lot of choices. You've also got a lot of good quality. And you're also seeing legacy type properties get listed. I mean, we've got 20 acre parcels that are horse equestrian properties that have only traded hands once in the last 20 or 30 years that are coming on the market. You've got properties with waterfront access or ski access. You've got incredible listings at all the clubs. This is a great time to be a buyer. We've also touched on this a little bit. There has been a correction in pricing and there continues to be some pockets that are correcting even more with pricing. Buyers, you're in the driver's seat. If you're pre-approved pre and you know what you want, you can come in and probably make some good, strong offers on properties. 
Once again, you've got great choices, you've got legacy type properties, and we've seen pricing pull back from that COVID peak back to a buyer's favor. I don't know how long this is going to last. It's anyone's guess. If I had to throw a number out there, I think you've got a couple quarters at best in the buyer's court, and then it's going to shift back to being in the seller's market again. Why can I say that? Big Sky is really special. It doesn't take many sales to all of a sudden have that inventory come back down to a more aggressive level. Right now, it's in the buyer's favor. So if you're a buyer, get ready. And last thing, why I'm saying it's a great time to be a buyer is the overall fundamentals of Big Sky are still strong. I mean, look at our amazing ski mount, new tram, new lifts. Our town center continues to get new businesses opening up. This is a great place to be. Overall, when you look at the landscape of choices around the ski industry, Big Sky is best in class. The overall fundamentals of not only Big Sky, but the region are really strong. Airport has tremendous growth, 27 direct flights coming in from around the country. You've got this amazing MSU University that continues to grow under the leadership of their president down there. Bozeman's growing like weed down there, and it has all sorts of new, great, exciting things being added. So the overall, the region and Big Sky fundamentals remain really strong. So advice for buyers, just like the sellers, be smart, get good counsel, you know, make sure that you hire a broker or agent to represent you that you trust and that understands your needs. Do a lot of research up front, understand the landscape before you go out there and just start driving around. Make sure that you get that data like Michael had talked about and understand your segment really well so that you're an educated buyer coming into it and have that quality representation. But here's a key one. When you find it, you got to act quick. This is not a time to sit around and say, mm, I might give it and see if pricing changes back to my favor a little bit, or let's see what happens with the election. Those things prove to not be in a buyer's favor over time. If you find something you like and you understand the data, you should be educated enough to be able to write a good, strong, aggressive offer on a piece of property. And when you do write an offer, write a strong offer, try to limit the number of contingencies. And if you're pre-approved, you've got your, your ducks in a row ahead of time, you've got your standard you know, um, contingencies like inspections and title and all that type of stuff, that's all fine. But if you can write a strong offer with a relatively quick closing, you're in the driver's seat in this market and you are gonna be really happy with the result that you get. When you look back two, three years from now, I think you're gonna be really happy that you listen to this and that it is a buyer's market and great time to be doing that right now. I spent a little extra time on this today because I could say in 25 years of being here, I could probably have said it's a buyer's market three, maybe four times over the last 25 years. So it's a really unique opportunity when you can see a strong enough shift in a market to where it goes to either a seller or buyer's side. And right now it's in the buyer's, buyer's favor. All right, before we jump into some Q and A's, which I think is really important, I just, I wanna cover off on just, you know, one, once again, a, a couple little things that I, we talked about today. First and foremost is that Big Sky is a wonderful place. It's got incredible fundamentals and the overall lifestyle and landscape of Big Sky has never been better. Mother Nature blessed us with truly one of the best places in the country. But we have had a really strong run, especially since COVID happened. And that growth spurt analogy that I used in the opening, I'd like to just go back and readdress that. Abnormal growth spurt. You know, typically real estate, three to 5% appreciation and growth over time is when you look back over 50, 70 years, that's what is a, a controlled mechanism of growth that a market of buyers and sellers can absorb. COVID threw that all out and we just had crazy growth during that time. And now we're starting to see that hangover effect from that. And, and it's time to grow back into that new set of clothes that, you know, the, that growth spurt occurred. So things like Big Sky growing up a little bit, we need more restaurants. We need to get some more infrastructure in. We also need to see building costs settle out. It got way out of hand, everything from the cost to buy a piece of land or a home. But then if you bought a piece of land to build, it got so expensive over the last couple of years that we're hearing this a lot from buyers. They're looking for that to settle so that they have the confidence to step back into the market. And we're starting to see that happen. So all of those things start to happen. You're going to see this thing click again at some point in the, in the coming months, and it will be back to that normal rise. But we're seeing a little bit of that lag right now or called flattening. And, and that's, once again, a great time to be a buyer. 
Sellers, you've still had an amazing run. You've had years of tremendous growth, probably historic growth when you look back at it. So if you are looking to sell, it is a good time to be a sell as long, seller as long as you are priced appropriate. All right, let's take a pause here. We're going to jump into some Q&A. We've already had a couple questions submitted. If you'd like to jump into the Q&A section down below, I'm happy to, um, to address some of those as well. So Ashley, maybe what we'll do is... Um, have you, uh, do you want to read off the questions or do you want us, how do you want to handle this? All right. Well, it looks like we've got a couple in here that I can open with. Um, interest rates. What can we expect as consumers? I'll have Mike cover that again. He, he, he chatted with about that a bit, but I'll have him just add a little more color to that. Yeah. And there's actually a good question in the, um, the Q and a about how, how do you see the upcoming federal uh, election affecting inflation and interest rates? And if you look back historically, there's been very de minimis change during an election election period of interest rates. Um, you know, the and we don't really expect to see much of a change before the election. But I do think that a lot of consumers are sitting on the sidelines waiting and they're using the as they usually do using the election as an excuse to wait and see whether I buy or sell or make a large purchase or make a decision in life. And so I think you're going to continue to see uh, over the next you know, three months as we head into the November election, four months, that um, interest rates won't change much, nor will the environment around um, real estate sales and transactions. Excellent. And yeah, no, a great question. And I will say this, while interest rates on the national landscape make a huge deal, they don't make as big of impact, we predict here, in terms of what buyers are utilizing to purchase. We're still 80% cash buyers in Big Sky. So interest rates, well, then why is it affecting our market or why are we talking about it so much? When we see things like this interest rate increase, what this does is it creates a lot of noise in the market just like an election, just like wars, things like that just create a lot of noise in the market. And people are affected by the news and the noise of the day. So when people are getting constantly bombarded with war, news, I mean, um, interest rates, election, things like that, you're just consumer behavior starts to shift a little bit. You're a little less apt to want to make a big transaction occur. It's not that you don't believe in the pricing or you don't have the money ready to go. You just kind of become a little bit flat in terms of your consumer behavior for big purchase decisions like this. So once again, 80% still cash buyers. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines for purchases like Big Sky Real Estate, but we're starting to see, um, but it affects people's just overall confidence. Um, question, looking to sell in the next three months, what's the game plan? I covered a little bit about this when I talked about sellers. But it really comes down to two things. One is you've got to market aggressively. You cannot expect that an MLS, I'll repeat this, an MLS listing is going to just sell. We as a brokerage are spending twice as much on our marketing right now of properties than we were a year or two ago. Twice as much we're spending on our marketing. And that's everything from videos to the ads, regional and local ads, to um, all the different you know, open houses and things like that. You've got to get aggressive about it. But ultimately, it comes down to price. Price, price, price. And if you're looking to sell in the next three months, you need to be aggressively priced to a buyer's favor to sell. All right. That covers off on a couple of questions. Um, Ashley, any more questions that have come in? No, we covered them all, Eric. All right, we'll give a minute if anyone else has something to, to chat or to put in. Um, one of the things that I will talk a little bit about and, and how to keep Big Sky special, how to keep Southwest Montana special. Well, we are lucky. We've got great ski mountain. We've got great trails. We've got great rivers. We've got Yellowstone Park. We've got the things that we talked about in Bozeman. But one of the things that we're finding when we talk to buyers and sellers and people coming to this region is they are leaving places like the Colorado ski, Colorado, Utah ski resorts, California ski resorts, and they're coming to Montana because they see something different. They see more room. They see more space. They see these blue skies and fresh streams. They can go out and catch a native cutthroat trout or do an amazing walk down to Oozle Falls or walk in our great farmer's market here in Big Sky. Things like this where it feels a little bit more small town. 
It's that, it's that when I remember moving to Big Sky and I always noticed that people were waving at each other when they drove down the road. That sort of hospitality and that amazing kind of romantic story that I just told, that's our nugget. That's the nugget that we need to protect to not only keep this special for us, but to protect those real estate values. We all have a duty to take care of this area. So find a way to get involved and take care of it. Whether it's helping build the school, we've got an amazing school here in Big Sky. Believe you me, that school impacts your real estate values. Trail systems, BSEO, all the great work that they're doing at the chamber, things like that are critical in supporting your real estate values. Do not turn a blind eye to it. We don't have a government here in Big Sky that's making those level, those sort of decisions. It comes down more to a local level where you've got these group, these charitable groups or these organizations like BSCO or Resort Tax. These are critical and fundamental groups that are impacting values as it goes back. But one of the last things I'll cover off on is nature. People come here because they love to see the elk and they love to see all the incredible, the, the bighorn sheep down at the corner or the moose or hear about the stories about seeing a bear and porcupine. Those are really special moments that make a huge impact on people. And it's our duty to help protect that area. There are areas to develop and there are areas to protect. And that is becoming a bigger and bigger headline, not only in Big Sky, but the region and the country is we have to protect the areas that we came to enjoy. So you're starting to see some really big headlines about animal corridors and animal crossings, things like that. Those are really important things to pay attention to because once again, they will daisy chain back to protecting real estate values. They are critical. You hear stories about when you go to other ski towns and say, it used to be amazing here. We used to have this, we used to have that. We have the luxury now in Big Sky to not write that headline. We have the luxury of saying, we protected it. We made like this over my shoulder, this beautiful picture of bear 399. We have an opportunity to work with that mother nature landscape and do that. So one of the things that we're doing as a group this summer is we're hosting this wildlands festival in, in partnership with great groups like Lone Mountain Land Company and some amazing other sponsors where we're hosting a two-day music festival with these incredible artists like Marin Morris and Dirks Bentley and Lucas Nelson. And then we're taking the proceeds and giving them back to groups that work on conservation like Gallatin Valley Land Trust and Greater Yellowstone Coalition and Wild Montana. So that's our way of trying to be part of that. And you can be part of that too. Anyone who buys a ticket or comes out, know that your money is helping go back to support groups like that. So if we don't have any other questions, it looks like we had one more pop in here. I will pull it up. Are you seeing an increase in commercial activity and development to help with the, the growing into bigger clothes as analogies that you discussed? We are, um, as many of you know, Low Mountain Land Company who owns the Big Sky Town Center is doing um, an overall master plan study of how to finish out the build out of Town Center. So some of that is, is being completed and then there will be a new phase of development coming. They've opened for public comment and been an open book and allowing people to bring ideas, but you are gonna see the balance of that town center built out over the coming years. And I do believe that's gonna be one of the big catalysts for kind of stabilizing and making us big sky go from kind of that awkward teenage years to adult years is when that town center is completed, you've got a main street to, you know, door to door from the hospital all the way down to the Hungry Moose done and completed and the parks and all that stuff completed. I believe that will be a, a real, you know, real big um, shift in the market. But one of the things I will address to your question is in, in regards to commercial activity, we're starting to see a new generation of types of businesses coming to town. So you're starting to see businesses that have existed in other ski towns. Cowboy Coffee is a great example that are coming and then now setting up shop in Big Sky. So we love our entrepreneurs. We've had some great entrepreneurs that have been part of the Big Sky landscape for many years, and we need to cherish and patronize them for sure. But, and we're also starting to see these very well-established, well-capitalized businesses that are coming into our market that know how to operate and stay open in markets that are resort-driven, meaning up cyclical markets where you're super busy in the summer and then and have kind of softballs. And those businesses will really help Big Sky grow into that next, you know, next set of shoes per se. So yes, in the, we are seeing more commercial activity. Um, you are going to see a lot more coming in terms of building out town center as they add more hotels and, and more, and more, um, and more commercial spaces for businesses to operate. All right. No more questions. I will, I will bring it to a close and I will say this, Warren Miller, 
had a great quote in his movie. If you don't do it this year, you'll be one year older when you do. So I firmly believe that in life, you know, whether it's something you apply to your family or your business, but when it comes to real estate, it really, it really bodes true. So as, as a seller, it's time to, if time to sell, just be ready to go. Um, there's a lot of great brokerages around the area. We'd love the opportunity of working with you and buyers. This, this should be a bumper sticker on your car right now. <laughs> If you don't do it this year, you'll be one year older when you do. And it's a great time to be a buyer. Grateful for everyone's time. Grateful for Ashley, Mike, and Michael helping us out with this today. If you've got any further questions about this, please feel free to reach out to Outlaw Realty. Any of us would happen to do, happily do a deeper dive with you. We always love to get out and walk around and go see stuff in person. So we'd love to do a tour with you, if that makes sense. Remember to take care of Montana, you guys. It's here to take care of us. We need to take care of that. So find a role in being part of the community or being part of helping protect Montana. Look forward to seeing you around town. Enjoy this beautiful start to summer. Take care, everybody.